Okay, so we've got the in antennas in there, and we've got the back spine in there. So we're just going to go through and start keeping a clean house again. So we've been quite good with the outliner, so we're just going to go through and start recolouring these. So using the same convention, left blue, right for red. I'm just going to go through and start going to recolor these. So object display, drawing overrides, enable overrides, and then drag to that blue color. And the same thing on the opposite side. Get that crimson red. And then for the spine controls, what I tend to do is keep a dark, uh, a bright red, sorry, like a blood vivid red for the upper body. And then for this one in the middle, I'm going to make this yellow. Like we said with global control, the yellow is sort of like a bulk mass area. And because this is the section in between these two spines, it's going to have a lot of influence over the character over where his entire upper body goes and how it's going to connect to this uh, tail and also eventually this massive shell here so I'm keeping that yellow because it's quite got quite a big influence and these back controls down here will enable overrides and we'll choose have a look at these a different green I'll take this uh, sort of bright green colour but we want to make sure it's not the green colour that's the same as something selected because then it would be quite hard to tell what we've, what we've got selected or what we haven't got selected so green for the tail, yellow for large areas that we're going to control red for the upper body and then left blue and this sort of crimson red for right okay so we're going to do just a sort of default bind at the moment just to see how this is going to work so I'm just going to hide all show oh, show none sorry and then I'm going to show polygons and show joints ah. so what we're going to do in here is again what we said at the end of the last tutorial is click at the top right here and go to select by name and type out the wildcard which is the time sign JTBN underscore which is the prefix we want to select and then another time sign and then we just hit enter and it's going to go through and select every single JTBN joint which is what we want and now we're going to select shift select the skin and if you can't select the skin it's usually on this layer we've got it as referenced so I'm going to unreference that Shift select the skin, and we're going to go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, and go to the options. And again, I'll just reset this quickly. Now, we selected them up here, which actually selects them each individually. And like with the arm here, these are BN joints. These are BN joints, these are BN joints, and so is the forearm twist. But remember, we split the arm up, and this down here looks like it's selected, which was a JT end joint, but it only it's only white because its parent, which is the wrist or the forearm twist, sorry, is the one that's selected. So this one isn't selected. So we want to go to select by joints because if we use joint by hierarchy, it's going to select this joint and also that end joint in there. But we don't want that one. So selected joints and click closest distance and. I'm going to leave everything else down below just as default because we're not going to get a final skinning for this. This is just to see what it's going to look like. So I'll just hide the joints and show the nubs, uh, oops, show the polygons and show the nubs curves. So now we can start to see how this character is going to start working. And this is the part where rigging is probably the most enjoyable because you've done all that work, especially if you start learning rigging from the start because it can be quite a hard area to get used to and 
this is the part where all that hard work sort of, sort of pays off because we haven't been seeing the character moving for we actually haven't seen the character move at all but as we start to just test the skin in we've got quite most of this character rigged now so we can start to test the skin in and all of a sudden you can see this character come into life so you can see what your rigging is doing with this character and you can see with that default skin you're going to get a few errors like back here getting loads of collapsing and we still need to set up we still need to connect the arms to the rest of the rig so adding a bit of a clavicle in there but you can see here how things like adding that double joint the arm even with the default skin in we just used you can see how the arm isn't collapsing as much and you can see here twisting this forearm we're getting that nice forearm twist in there so all these all that hard work is starting to show so you can get that nice twist along there the, the forearm isn't collapsing and we can start to try test this by going to the IK and FK seeing how this is working it's looking nice start to see how this spines working and that's looking funky and this is probably the most enjoyable part of rigging all that pit, that work starts to pay off and we can see how well that ribbon spine is keeping that volume and keeping that squash and stretch you can almost imagine the sort of movement cycle of this character now sort of pulsating along the floor how that's going to work like we said down here just checking things we've done keeping it on that point there we can get the tail to rotate around this point so essentially just knowing how the rig's going to work how it's going to animate we'll eventually know or get a sort of sense of where we want to put the pivots of objects and because we've put the pivot right on here we can see it's rotating around that point so later on for some sort of comical animation if this tail was to ever act like a hand and grab something we can see how having that pivot there we can get this to sort of feel around and touch for stuff whereas if the pivot was over here it'd be quite hard to rotate that because the whole rotation would be rotating around with a big gap between it okay so and at the moment parts aren't connected up so the antenna isn't connected to the upper body so we can see how we need to set that up in the next few tutorials but we can start to see how it's going to edit the skin in how it's going to edit the rig and then we can start messing about these antennas and this is where you can start to see the character's true potential so having these really flexible antennas and because these are default skin in again there's a lot that we'll need to clean up between the left and right but just for a default skin we can see how this rig is now going to start working okay so what I will probably do is save before you skin the character and that way you can just go back to your previous save before you've skinned it or you could select the mesh or because we haven't actually done anything with the mesh yet we could make sure if we're ever testing the skin in, make sure all the controls have been reset back to zero because if we delete the skin it's like if we move the arm up here and then we delete the history on this object or delete the skin cluster the arm would stay up here and then all of a sudden if we reset the control back down here the arm would stay up there and then if we were to reskin it we'd have a problem so just in that case if you're ever testing the skin in, it's always a good idea to just save it do a, do a uh, simple uh, skinning, mess around with it and then don't save it, just reload up your character before you skin it. That's just for the testing skinning, when we get into skinning it later on we'll be saving it. So that's just to test it and just to show the work that we've put in. And also, one thing we didn't look at, we've got that squash and stretch in there as well, forgot about that. So we can sort of see his, his sort of potential coming through and we can start to test how all these different things are going to work and also some of the problems areas that we're going to incorporate later on like here the scaling is causing this to crumple up so we need to you know keep that in mind 
and different things like that. Okay, so in the next tutorial we're just going to go through connecting the antennas, the arms and the spine together so we've got the whole thing moving together.